Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Sims 4 Random Pets Laboratory Challenge, where we mix and match all sorts of different animal genes in order to see what kind of curious creatures we can create. And today, my friends, I am feeling all things countryside and cottagey because I have been enjoying so much our adventures in the cottage living expeditions that we have been doing with our green family legacy in Sims 4. Oh my gosh, I am so in love with cottage living. Uh, and so ironically, I wanted to work with kind of like the countryside cottage animals and the ironic part is there's no sheep! There are actually no sheep in cottage living even though we have cows, llamas, chickens, rabbits, and foxes roaming around the world now and I wanted to correct that so today I decided let's do some sheep random crossbreeding and who better to help us out with some more of these sheep crossbreeds then a border collie! Then a beautiful border collie! One of the many species of different dogs out in the world who help so many shepherds to herd, organize, and protect their sheep. Uh, here where I live in North Carolina, it's actually really common for people to use Samoyeds up in the Appalachian Mountains to protect their sheep instead of border collies, which kind of blows my mind because you'll just be like driving along these backcountry mountainy roads, admiring the beauty of the Appalachian Mountains, and the next thing you know, you're staring at two gigantic Samoyeds who are just sitting among a field of sheep who are usually much smaller than they are. So we'll probably have to do a Samoyed crossbreed with a sheep pretty soon, but I wanted to go classic. So here we have a border collie named Zora. She is so beautiful and is actually making me think that perhaps Fern and Jean could welcome a border collie into their life to be friends with Toby at some point in the near future. Uh, but with that said, we're also working with Polo, the sheep. And this is kind of based off of a bighorn sheep, which is a species native to North America. You can find them around Yellowstone as well if you're up in some of the really mountainy, like craggy spots. So I'm gonna be looking for them when Chips and I actually go to Yellowstone next month. If you guys have any tips and bits of advice for first timers visiting Yellowstone, do please let me know now. We're getting ready to prepare for hopefully a grand adventure. But all of that little bit said around the water cooler of the Labarcatory. Though truthfully, if you guys were in the Labarcatory with me, I would recommend you don't drink the water. You just don't know what kind of genetics might have slipped in there at this point. We're gonna get ready to mix these genes. So let's pull up our very first Petri dish puppy using the random comments in our random comment generator, using those comments from our previous videos. So, all right, Zora, are you ready? I think Zora's gonna have so much fun. She's gonna be really excited to be able to herd all of these little babies. Our next breed is gonna be, oh, so cute. All right, you guys ready for this? This is going to be Janetta. Janetta, welcome, welcome. Oh my goodness. You look like you definitely are gonna have, look at those eyebrows. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have something pretty hilarious to work with there, I think. Janetta, welcome, welcome. You are a couch potato who is a glutton and smart. Hmm, definitely taking after your mother with the smarts there. And actually, when Janetta grows up, there's a chance that she might end up inheriting some horns or some hooves, depending on what the dice of destiny say when she becomes an adult. So we do have those kinds of interesting features that might start showing up. Just be prepared for that, you guys. All right, and Janetta, you suggest a wolf be a pretty cool crossbreed to do. So I'm gonna add that into the list. There we go, a wolf and a horse. We haven't done a horse crossbreed in a long time, actually, so it'd be really fun to dig into that. And then, oh, we have one who looks like a little lamb. Oh my goodness. So this is actually going to be from a Cebu. A Cebu, welcome, welcome. And you have a huge list of suggestions. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna like copy these down really quickly on my computer instead of just my hand notes because there are so many of them and they look so good. So a red fox and a dwarf goat, a red panda and a deer, a ferret or a weasel and a squirrel, a hyena and a Tasmanian devil, a pig and a cow, and a hedgehog and a dragon. I would love to do a hedgehog and a dragon if we had hedgehog genes. Currently don't have hedgehog genes, but never give up. Maybe one day a custom content creator will create that. Also, you know what, Acebo? Technically you can produce dairy, I guess, because you are a goat. Sheep? Sheep? Can you make dairy from sheep? You know what, we're just gonna leave that this time. But welcome, welcome, Acebo. You are going to produce dairy. You're going to be independent and vocal. All right. So far, both the puppies have red eyes too, which makes me wonder. Ooh, 
and now we have the blind eyes on this one. Hang in there, Zora's pup. This is going to be... <gasps> Hello, cutie! This is Susan! And Susan, you actually suggest a fire dragon and a zebra. Okay, that's pretty specific and pretty cool. So we're gonna put that down on the list. Oh my gosh, the list has gotten so long. We're gonna be doing so many cool laboratory experiments, you guys. Thank you! I love seeing your guys' curiosity come to life. And Susan, you are going to be a hairy, loyal little sleuth. Oh, I really love the idea that like, Zora is just going around so happily herding this little group of crossbreed puppies. Taking- And then we've got- Dun 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 dun- <gasps> Wow! Look at the coloring on Worm! <laughs> so this is actually a worm from Worm on a String. And a, a unicorn gargoyle or a citrus fox melon dragon hybrid. Whoa! You guys are really coming up with some great fantasy mixes. Worm, you are a sleuth who is a troublemaker and very adventurous, and I love your coat pattern! I can't wait to see where that turns out. Like, are you gonna be like a sheep? Are we gonna have a big, beautiful, fluffy sheep that looks like that? Oh, the curiosity. All right, let's pull up the... Oh my gosh, these, these little ones are so ridiculously cute. I think we might have to get a Border Collie for our Sims 4 series. Oh, whoa, okay, so now we're taking a sudden sharp veer into a different kind of look with Yanira. Yanira, welcome. Yanira, there we go. And wow, okay, so so far all of the pups I think have been super fluffy, but Yanira has a different kind of coat pattern. And Yanira, you are going to be a sleuth who is a troublemaker and smart. Hmm, I love the tail, look at that little tail too. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's just really adorable. Okay, and now we have our last little petri dish puppy. We'll pull up the last... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, so cute! We absolutely have to do a more Border Collie mixes because that is a one heckin' adorable puppy. Oh my gosh, she would grow into such a beautiful dog. Look at that. Okay, totally in love. But the very last of the little pups that we have now is actually going to be... Oh my gosh! A little lamb, and this is going to be Jay Feather. And Jay Feather, you suggest doing some crossbreeds between warrior cats and lynxes. Hmm, I'm gonna have to add that to the list too. Dragons from the Wings of Fire series and warrior cats from the Warrior Cat series seem to be very popular right now. I'm glad to see that you guys are definitely reading some great books. Very important to read lots of books. It's one of the most vital things you could ever do to yourself. I promise you, read lots of books from all sorts of subjects. Let your curiosity and your imagination grow with nonfiction books and fiction books and fantasy books and poems and anything else that you just desire. Some good manga, whatever it is, and your life will be better for it. So it makes me so excited when I see you guys get really thrilled about your favorite books. But all right, Jay Feather, welcome! You are going to be a smart, loyal, hairy little one. And we'll have to see if you grew up into being more of a sheep or if you grew up into being more of a border collie. All right, you guys ready for this? Now let me get the Dice of Destiny prepared and we will see if Janetta and the rest of our little crossbreeds are going to inherit the horns and the hooves. Let's do this. Janetta? <gasps> Janetta, look at your eyebrows! <laughs> oh my gosh! You look like a little puppy straight out of Star Trek, I'm not gonna lie. Wow. And Janetta, you actually did not inherit the horns, but you did inherit the hooves! Alright! Well, take kind of taking like that smart look. What does the smart look look like? with those eyebrows. I've never really seen those eyebrows on one of our laboratory dogs before. This is amazing. And Janetta did actually end up inheriting hooves too. I don't know how that's going to end up working for you, Janetta, but I do hope that you're able to frolic along and have a good time. And then we've got Asibu. Asibu, let's go ahead and grow you up. <gasps> the eyebrows! All right, I think the eyebrows are definitely going to be a feature of this family line. And Asibu, you did inherit the horns, but you did not actually inherit the hooves. So you just have some very interestingly colored paws. All right, let's see, where are your horns? Let me find them. Gosh, we have so many different types of antlers and horns and things that we could be using on... Oh, look at those. Oh man, we haven't worked with those horns in a long time. 
Oh, and the moose face. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we have a lot of really cool genetics that we could definitely be working on. All right, I know you're in here somewhere. The right gene. Oh, I totally forgot about the saber fang too. <gasps> How could I forget that we have saber fang genetics to do as well? What the heck? What the heck, a doodle? Hang on here. Where are my horns? I'm probably just being really silly and missing the obvious. All right, we've got small horns. We've got pointy horns. We've got tiny teeth. We've got big old whiskers. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. I was being silly and just missing the obvious. All right, and then we'll go ahead and there you go, Asibu. Wow, you look really cool. Really serious with those horns too. So let's see if Susan actually ends up growing up to have horns too. <gasps> Susan, you're so fluffy! You are the ultra fluff dog! Oh my goodness, I would love to snuggle this puppers. Susan, oh. All right, and Susan, you actually ended up inheriting both. So Susan actually ended up with both of the horns, which I was not really expecting. Oh wow, they look really good on her. They kind of look like she just has little curls behind her ears. That's actually really nice. And then she also ended up with the hooves. So we're going to go ahead and give her a tidy little pair of hooves. Wow. You know, Susan's able to pull this off in a way that really makes it look more like a fashion statement than some random jeans that got whipped into her DNA. Susan, excellently done. All right, and Worm, who has this beautiful, unique coloring. Let's grow you up, my friend. <gasps> Worm! What is with your coat? It's so cool! Look at the swirlies! Wow! All right, and Worm, you actually ended up inheriting both the horns and the hooves, too. All right, let's go ahead and put on those horns. Oh, I love this. I love how you just never know what you're going to get when you start these mixes. Oh, the gray ones look really good. And then we'll go ahead and do gray down here as well. Now let's do a little mix, a mix of colors. There we go. Worm, you look beautiful. You look stunning. You have the smallest tail in the world and you just look amazing. Oh my gosh. I love it. I absolutely love it. And then we have Yanira. Let's see what else we've got. I mean, these horns, oh, Yanira. Wow. I wasn't expecting like this entire design. I love the tail. I actually love her. She's so different from her siblings. She ended up inheriting the horns, but not the hooves. But I really just love how she came out. Yanira, let's see. Is this, it's like a little fashion statement for her too. These horns are really pretty. We should definitely do more sheep crossbreeds. Wow, Yanira. Yeah, it just, it's like everybody is just kind of frolicking past and they've got these little fashion statements of these horns on their head. Jay Feather, you're the last one up, my friend. Oh, Jay Feather! They ended up with a really unique look to their fur, thanks to that border collie inheritance. Uh, and actually, no horns and no hooves. Huh. Huh. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jay Feather eating some of like the plants out of your garden, though. Definitely looks a lot like a sheep. But all right, guys, there we go. Unexpected eyebrows and some absolutely gorgeous fashion statements when it comes to the horns and the hooves. I guess horns in many ways are fashion statements for many animals already since it helps them to kind of establish themselves amongst the others and even find some mates or, you know, defend their territory or defend themselves against aggression like predators. Hmm, I love it. I love it. But all right, so if you guys could, do please leave your comments down below to help us come up with even more curious crossbreed creations that we could do. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.